Too much water. We die. All right. We are live. Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys all for joining Speculation Sunday on a Sunday. We got just as Danny in the house. How you doing, Danny? I'm doing good. Uh, it's a, to, I actually went to the park. Well, I was actually staying at the park this weekend. I was staying with my family who's in town um, at the villas at the Disneyland Hotel. So that's my first time staying in, in them, actually. I, so. I can't wait to talk about that. I, I want to hear your opinion, like how, how the vibe and just the aesthetic, everything, like how it made you feel. We'll get into that. Um, thank you all for joining. Today I really want to focus on Disneyland and Disneyland Forward. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Universal and Knott's, uh, but for the most part, it's all about Disneyland Forward. And uh, just recently, we had like a five, six hour approval meeting that went down with Anaheim and it got voted approved. And I think it was either 4-1 or 5-1. It was, it was like a very dominant vote. 5-1. Uh, 5-1 for Disneyland Forward uh, to do its rezoning with land that it already owns to then become theme park. Uh, and a lot of stuff came out of that. Uh, that's going to be very interesting because um, it, it, this is a humongous expansion that would happen. Uh, even if it's just from a parking lot perspective and stuff like that, like, it's just, it's just a lot. It's a lot to entail. Uh, Danny, any content uh, that's coming from your end, uh, let, let people know so we can know what's up. Yeah, um, I filmed a video this weekend um, that I'm going to combine with food and wine coverage from previous week. Uh, so that'll be coming out this week. Um, and then I also have obviously a new podcast this week on the 5571. Um, so you can find that at the 5571 podcast, a uh, weekly podcast episode. Um, and then the YouTube channel, Just Ask Danny, you can subscribe there as well too for new videos heck yeah um welcome everybody thank you for joining us on this beautiful sunday night uh let me get into the chat what is everybody saying uh we got amanda how are you doing i'm doing wonderful had a very fun day uh very beautiful weather honestly um just finished dinner watched luck of the irish that movie was so nostalgic that's a disney movie isn't it yeah, that's one of the ones I wanted you to watch for a Disney Channel original movies. <laughs> I feel like I've watched it. I feel like I've watched it. It's it's just been a long time. Uh, still has to go to city council approval. Yep, that's uh, sometime in April. I think it's like April 16th or something. Uh, it's very soon. It's literally around the corner. Uh, Danielle says, just listen to your last podcast, Danny. Thank you, Danielle. Yep, yep. I... Uh... Last week we talked about uh, well we talked about some of the stuff we're gonna be talking about today so on last week's episode so let's go. Um, also, too, please smash the like button if you're just joining. Hit the like button. Hit it. Hit it. Uh, all right, let's get this party started. We got enough people in here. Um, Disneyland Forward. It's it's so much to unfold. Uh, what are like the key things that you got out of Disneyland Forward approval meeting? The one that just happened. What, what were the key things that stood out to you, Danny? That, that yeah, uh, yeah. would be a good time. So, uh, we talked about it before here on Speculation Sunday. Uh, so if you guys have been longtime watchers, uh, you probably are familiar with some of the talk we've had about this in the past. Uh, but Mondo and I actually had a chance to go to a few of these planning committee meetings prior to actually any vote taking place. So uh, we knew a lot of this stuff already um, because they had talked about it in the meeting. So they had talked about like some of the rules that uh, we'll be showing you today that um, Twitter user Mouska Gamer um, had been discussing and showcasing uh, live during the live stream of that approval meeting, uh, committee meeting that was voting on it all. Some of the rules like um, what they can and can't build in those spaces next to the hotels Disneyland Hotel, the Pixar Place Hotel, stuff like that. Um, uh, but they also provided some additional information that we hadn't heard yet. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, that Anaheim approved it, but also said, hey, you need to start, you need to start investing at this really quickly. And that investment doesn't include parking, aka like Disney. Yeah, don't just start building parking lots. 
and think that that counts kind of thing. So yeah. basically they said, Hey, Disney, you can approve, we'll approve this, but you need to start investing $2 billion within the first 10 years at minimum. And that can include any parking jobs that you're doing, AKA building new structures. So we're going to see quite a bit of construction once this gets the full go ahead um, because they're going to need to start that parking construction right away in order to, um, you know, have any use of any of these parking lots that are currently housing cars for the time being. Um, but yeah, we had, we had heard a lot of the rules that were showcased in this. Um, but I think one of the biggest takeaways um, from what I saw was just um, the biggest thing that I took away was, was essentially like when we were at the, the planning meetings and we've talked about this before on this show, uh, we were told multiple times that Imagineering hasn't and and wasn't doing any planning for these spaces because they didn't want to waste planning time if they weren't going to get approved. Um, but the big the big change in the narrative from Disney, even during this meeting and comments afterward, were that they already know what they want to build and where they want to build it. That's yeah. what they that that was like a direct quote from Disney. Um, or whoever spokesperson provided that. Um, so that to me means that they flipped along the way from previously saying, hey, we're not going to do anything here. So in my in my mind, and Mondo and I were talking about this a little bit, I think that somewhere along the way, they maybe got a little bit of an insider kind of tip that or like an, a hint on their end being like, okay, this is looking like things are going to get approved. So let's start the process of figuring out what we're going to put in here and 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 where and yeah. so i think that changed from the last time that we went to one of those meetings um so it's it's curious now that they already know what they want to build there so uh, that means that d23 expo could showcase potentially some things that are going to go there but um it could not we'll have to wait and see we got two gifted memberships from darnell w i gotta hit it twice let's go we got a gifted membership to West Coast Resell, and another one went to Nikki Enchanted. Uh, big thank you, Darnell. Fa fa. Heck yeah. Um, I I, I want to go over this Twitter feed, um, because it's it's it was a lot to to bring all together. Like everything that went down at Disneyland forward, and it's from Mouse Gamer on Twitter. So credit to Mouse Gamer. Uh, thank you, Mouse Gamer, for all your coverage during this because uh, Mouse Gamer was doing this for six hours, just keeping track of it all. Uh, I want to start off with this one, Danny. Uh, Disney expects to implement low-level fireworks in the areas either west of Disneyland Drive or the current Toy Story lot. No full aerial fireworks would be permitted. Um what? <laughs> uh, that's exciting, dude. Uh, I I didn't even it originally from everything I've heard, Danny. I never expected any type of fireworks to be implemented at Toy Story Lot. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, that makes me wonder, kind of what kind of um, park or or addition that we're gonna get in this space. Um, you know, typically Disney does these low level fire. If you think of low level fireworks, that's what you see at, at Fantasmic, which is what's pictured there. Yeah. Um, you know, shooting off the, the Tom Service Island there. Um, it's also what you'd see shooting off the castle. Um, and you, you uh, could you know, also say like uh, world of color during New Year's Eve or, or like Lunar New Year. Yeah, exactly. It basically kind of just like fountain fireworks that come off and uh, even ones that, that explode in the air, but like, are low low level so nothing like that goes super super high in the air and like you have to look up to see it's like something that's like basically just maybe as high as like mickey's fun wheel or something yeah because i felt like the plans that they were concept arting for toy story it looked more like shopping center uh in in a sense disney springs florida like that's what i was feeling like it's starting to feel like it might be theme park, Danny. <laughs> Toy Story theme park. Um, that would only mean another gate. There's no... I don't know how you would connect these these theme parks 
uh, from like California Adventure, Disneyland to Toy Story. Toy Story's far. Uh, w- 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 do you do you think that's the intention? They're trying to go a third gate that way. <laughs> Yeah, I was all, I was thinking that the other day when we had kind of heard some of the the rules coming out of this. Um, you know, they showcased a, a shopping center, but in all reality, um, it could be a little bit of like, I don't know, it could be a little bit of both. Like, um, I think about like Epcot in the sense that you know we were supposed to get an Epcot here on the West Coast um, with um, a spaceship Earth that was bigger than the one they have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but the, all those plans got canceled at the last minute and, um, uh, Disney California adventure was born in, um, in the wake of that, um, in a very hurried meeting, which as you know, resulted in Disney 1.0, Dis- DCA 1.0, which then had to be redone. Um, so, you know, if you think about Epcot at Walt Disney world, maybe they built like some kind of smaller version of Epcot where it's just a park that has festivals and, And, um, and, you know, like a world showcase that's all centered around dining and shopping. And there's not really like that many attractions in it. And, um, you know, that that could work really well, like a a whole shopping center slash um, experiential thing that's like around the world, but only that section of Epcot kind of thing. That's something I thought of maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, Danny, uh, Maybe like uh, like I, I, everything you're saying, so like a Epcot with no attractions, but like a water show, obviously. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I mean. There's no way there's like a a stage show with fireworks happening here. Um, let me let me ask this question: Is this just a fake out? This is all just it, it was just uh, t- to put something out there. This is nothing of what we're gonna get. That's what they indicated from the beginning. They were just yeah. putting, they were just showing us an example of, hey, if this was approved, this is stuff you can expect here, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, um, if the fireworks are going on the on the west of Disneyland Drive, so that would be, it, would that be the expansion you think of Disneyland or uh, DCA? Like, wh- which which side would be the one to get the fireworks? I'm guessing it would be the DCA side, right? Because they, because DCA, just DCA in general, they don't have fireworks. Disneyland, we got Castle fireworks and we got Fantasmic. So to add a third thing on the Disneyland side, I don't think so. I think it'd be a DCA. Uh, it kind of just depends on what what's actually being built there, right? If you think about some of the lands that they said, like, oh, we could build this. Like, if you're building an Avatar space, um, from what we know about Avatar. Um, at least the world of Pandora and Walt Disney World, that has nothing to do with fireworks. So there would be no reason for that to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you think about like Wakanda, like they've showcased and potentially putting in some kind of Wakanda stuff. Um, they've showcased putting in a frozen land. Um, they've showcased like a Peter Pan situation. Yeah. Um, and like the Fantasy Springs kind of idea from Tokyo Spring or Tokyo's uh, Disney Sea. Um, I, any of those, like maybe a Peter Pan section could have like a little bit of a fireworks moment, but um, like it all just depends on kind of what's going on there. Yeah, it's a tough one. What the heck would have fireworks out here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling, just because I know how important Marvel is, I would imagine maybe it's the Wakanda area, for all we know. It's just like some Avenger battle going on with fireworks, stunt show. I don't freaking know. I, I It's a hard one. It's a hard one to be like, this is why they're putting fireworks over there. Um, real quick too, Danny. It, Disneyland prices are already in the... 500 to 1200 dollar range um if you all of a sudden start getting theme park around Par- uh, pixar place hotel disneyland hotel dude what are the prices at that point are we talking one thousand dollars a night <laughs> like what do you think <laughs> because all of a sudden yeah. you're selling a hotel that's literally looking at theme park like right underneath you <laughs> On, on all sides. All, all sides. Yeah, literally, dude. What do you think? What are the prices, Dad? Because you're kind of more in the, 
you know, you could get a good gist of this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if it's totally surrounded by by theme parks at that point, then uh, really your standard views become the ones that face West or uh, Walnut Street, and then uh, inward towards the pool. <laughs> Those wouldn't be premium anymore. Those would be considered like standard because you got theme park elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. You, you think Disneyland Hotel just skyrockets to pretty much a thousand a night by that point? Because we're talking like twenty thirty fives, you know what I mean? It's it's pretty out there. Yeah, I mean it'd be right in the center of it all, right? And and in the even in that fake concept art there that was just kind of for the purpose of whatever, um, you can kind of see what looks like a another turnstile on that on that side of Disneyland. So that'd be like a direct exit for for Disneyland people to uh, go right outside both Disney and California Adventure and Disneyland in like a secondary esplanade. So that's, it looks, I mean, that's what it looks like anyway, right there in that, mm -hmm. in that particular photo. Man. It's so crazy. Um, let me see. All right. I want to keep going. Uh, and, and once again, we're going to stick with mouse, uh, mouse gamer. Uh, this one, this was very interesting uh, that came out of Disneyland Forward. Uh, Disneyland Railroad Station, Hungry Bear, Pirates of the Caribbean are all historical landmarks that may be impacted by Disneyland Forward. They stress that these are not planned to be impacted, but plans may evolve and result in alteration or demolition. Uh, Hungry Bear? Hungry Bear, uh, historical landmark. What, what's going on here? Is it is this like a tax thing or something? That's what I was thinking. Um, Hungry Bear, I could easily see uh, being like changed. Um, and Pirates of the Caribbean, the only reason I could see um, Disneyland Forward affecting that at all would be um, the current situation right now for Pirates of the Caribbean is that the queue just doesn't cut it right and we're seeing right now the worst um, you have ever seen we're we're seeing right now um a just complete overhaul of haunted mansion in a way that we never thought right we i knew they were adding all that extra stuff but i did not know that the, that literally everything outside the haunted mansion would be gone everything like li literally everything is gone outside the haunted mansion that we know and remember from the original Haunted Mansion, at least from our generation, right? Yeah. So, like, Pirates of the Caribbean, even right now, is vastly different from what that photo looks like, right? There's no pit or bridge in front of that entrance to Pirates of the Caribbean. That's just straight off of New Orleans Square right there. <laughs> there's yeah. no, like, there's no, like, multi-level situation happening there. So, it's already vastly changed from what that looked like. So, um, you know, the only thing I could think of is they completely redo the facade of the building in some way to fit and accommodate um, a, a new extended queue in a way that they've been doing for haunted for the Haunted Mansion. Um, and that could be in a, a plan for just anything about Disneyland forward. And so they have to kind of like put that there. Um, Main Street train station, I have no idea why that anything there would change. Hungry Bear, that's an easy one. Um, that if uh, if Disneyland's expanding like that previous showcase that we just saw for Disneyland Forward, where it's going over Disneyland Drive mm -hmm. on Disneyland Forward, that means that the Critter Country area is now a major thoroughfare to a brand new section of Disneyland that did not exist before. So um, the area, the Critter Country area, isn't like the biggest pathway in the world. Um, Dude, it's so tiny. It's time, like in between Tiana and uh, Pooh Corner. There's, it's too small, dude. F to 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 like a like a like a that is a pathway that will always have people walking. If Disneyland Four is real, because everybody yeah. is rope dropping that way. <laughs> like if Disneyland Forward is real and it's be it's already built and done, anybody that rope drops is going that way. For a long, for many years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I would say maybe Hungry Bear um, is a casualty of that because it's um, it's taking up so much space right there and can really um, help Disney kind of make pathways larger, 
Um, maybe we see Winnie the Pooh kind of become a casualty of that too. You know, I don't know. Um, yeah, just Pooh but, Corner, Pooh Ride, and Hungry Bear all gone just for the concept of a wide path in a Disneyland forward, right? That that could be a thing. Potentially, potentially yeah. So that's <laughs> the only reason why I think they may be called these out specifically. Um, but uh, very interesting. Uh, if for for. <sighs> Now that we know that Disneyland really cares about uh, walkways and uh, just <laughs> like queues, I, I guess I should say queues. They really care about their queues. Um, if they're addressing Pirates of the Caribbean to this extent, Danny, they have to address or uh, Haunted Mansion. They have to address pirates. Pirates is like the most one of the worst queues. Period. Now that they've cut off one whole side for lightning lane uh it, it's constantly overflowing in a cafe or lanes area and it's constant it, every single day it's above the bridge like it's the worst queue it's literally the worst queue like i don't know how how do you fix that uh like the i think the only solution that could have fixed that was that it goes in the the tree house <laughs> but the tree house is done so it's not going that way um I don't know. I don't know how how they address pirates, dude. It's just a weird one. What I'm trying to say is, may, maybe uh, st like stuff happens that um, I think the best way to say it. What about if we lose the haunted mansion store right now for Q? That's what I'm trying to say. There you go. What do you think of that? We lose uh, the bread bowls, and we lose the Haunted Mansion store, and the the Pirates of the Caribbean store, all for Q. Can you see that happening? Uh, maybe. And the Remember reason I everything? say, I don't think they want to let go of Lightning Lane, Danny. They, they want to keep Lightning Lane there. They said it's That's temporary. Yeah, it all has to make sense, Mondo, with uh, money, right? They're... They're never going to make a decision that's going to lose them money. That They're only going to make a decision that gains them money. So if uh, making more space to keep Lightning Lane permanently um, is more profitable than having three gift shops there, plus a character meet and greet with Jack and Sally, um, then, then maybe we could see something like that. But uh, if it's not going to make more money than the shops being there, then I don't think it will. Hmm. Because that's where the queue would go. Like, if they ever decided to do extended Pirates queue, it would go in a Haunted Mansion store. What is it called? Port Royale? Or I, I can't remember. Uh, Pieces of Eight. Pieces of Eight. Yes, that's what it's called. Um, let me see. I want to get into this one. Uh, where is it? Oh. Uh... All right, this is something you were talking about uh, earlier, Danny. Uh, right now, we're just sticking in Disneyland forward, everybody. That's all we're going to be talking about. Uh, Disney is required to make an investment in theme park development and new lodging equal to $1.9 billion within the next 10 years upon approval of Disneyland forward. Upon being asked, they responded that there is no timeline required to be disclosed beyond that. Uh, if Disney invests $2.5 billion in the first 10 years, uh, they will disregard a $5 million payment. Therefore, Anaheim is giving incentive to Disney to build as quickly as possible. The $2.5 billion must be attractions and lodging. Parking does not count. That's the one you were talking about. Uh, and, and what I want to get into, that means Disneyland Forward gets approved. I think the first thing they do is like, we're building a new land. It's a new land is coming somewhere. I don't know if it's Disneyland forward side or they go in a toy story, but um, the one I was thinking, Danny, and I think it's probably their priority. It's frozen. They want to get frozen at Disneyland. Uh, they've already implemented frozen uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, technically we got frozen in Epcot. Uh, and we're going to see Frozen now in Tokyo, uh, Fantasy Springs. So Frozen's like, they've just... Everywhere. They, it's everywhere. And we got another Frozen movie down, you know, down the pathway. Frozen is like the most important... It's like one of the most important properties of Disney. 
honestly. Uh, from a money-making perspective and a branding, uh, how, <laughs> the one big move that has happened recently, too, is uh, Anna and Elsa have been moved to the Royal Hall area right next to the castle. So now those two princesses are staying at Disneyland. I don't even know if they're doing meet and greets anymore at DCA, but they've been at Disneyland, I feel like, for like the last two months. And I thought that was a weird move because you never see Anna and Elsa at Disneyland, but they are popular, very long lines always. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, this two billion right here, I think is going into a frozen land, Annie. Um, what what are your thoughts, perspectives on, on, on like this portion of what went down for Disneyland Forward? Yeah, I think that um, I'm definitely I've, I had definitely always thought that that a frozen themed land would be coming soon. I always thought that we'd see that um, kind of placed on top of Autopia, um, and then the Autopia either being like severely downsized or or um, just taken out altogether. Um, but it makes sense that they use some of the space for frozen, um, because I thought that too. Um, but I personally think that, um, if this does get approved, like you said, Mondo, we'll probably see them simultaneously start working on whatever the new land is that they announce or new space or new experience. Um, and also the parking and the parking that they're going to start working on is the one that's off, off of Harbor behind all the hotels. So mm -hmm. that'll be um, where we see the next kind of move is uh, because if they can close, uh, if they can get that parking structure added, that's additional parking for Disneyland and also for downtown Disney, which would allow them to get rid of the Simba parking lot. Damn, big moves, big moves. <laughs> um, did, did you have a chance also to check this out uh, right here? Um, that the Harbor cast member lot, uh, is being eyed to create a large garage to support more cast member parking. Uh, so I, I'm guessing they want, they want a parking structure here, uh, because more cast members are going to be hired. Disneyland forward is creating more jobs, more jobs than ever before. Um, so that dude, this Disneyland forward move is like affecting everything, everything. Um, it's just crazy, dude. It's just crazy. Um, let me see. Uh, I saw somebody in the comments put, uh, do you think, uh, it's Zootopia? Do you think Zootopia has a chance to come to Disneyland? That's the first land they expand? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't necessarily know that it's that popular here. Uh, it's definitely popular, um, in, in Asia, which is where, you know, they've put, um, the, some of the investment in those parks. Um, that's where the movie did really well. Um, the movie made over a billion dollars, just like Frozen did. Um, but domestically, it didn't do as good as like Frozen or anything like that. So um, it definitely had its legs um, overseas. Um, I love Zootopia personally, and I, I would love to see something like that. I think it would be better in um, like Animal Kingdom, where you could, they already have like, Something like, you know, we've seen so many rumors about Rafiki's Planet Watch being turned into Zootopia and you have to take the train to get there just like you do in the movie. Yeah. I think that'd be so cool if they could do that. Um, but I just don't necessarily know that it fits really well into anything that we've got going on, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I know that um, in the past we've heard about how Shanghai Disneyland has like a five-year exclusivity yeah. Um, on on like uh, things that they build in their park, like Tron, Tron, for example. Yeah, like Tron and and uh, some of the other attractions that are there. Um, so potentially, maybe. Um, but even then, um, it sounds like from what we saw on Twitter not that long ago, we just saw it. I think Mondo, you shared it with me. Um, they had a space next to the Zootopia Land, which we all thought would be um, a space that they would use for expansion of Zootopia and they're already moving forward with using that space, but it's not for Zootopia. They're using it for something else. Um, so maybe Frozen. that's an indicator that <laughs> it's not doing as well as they thought it would or wasn't as popular. So yeah, you, you would think uh, that, that like, I want to give an example. That's like super Nintendo world having a dirt field next to it and they just don't expand it. It's like, what? <laughs> you would think it's super Nintendo world. 
I, I'm shocked that they're not expanding Zootopia, Danny. It's crazy. Like, it, it would only make sense. You have a dirt field next to Zootopia that's like the, the billions that they spent on that. Uh, you know what's going to go over there next to Zootopia? A galactic star cruiser. It's going to be resurrected over there. <laughs> just yeah. Uh, uh, there's a couple hey, questions in the chat. Yep. Oh, yeah. That was the one I was going to say. Why do they need to remove any pre existing attractions? They're planning on using land elsewhere. Um, I don't question. necessarily think they're going to remove any attractions per se, um, but you have to think about um, where are the guests going to cross over Disneyland Drive to get into this space? Um, and Pirates of the Caribbean, more specifically New Orleans Square um, and Critter Country are the two areas of Disneyland that are pushed up against that wall that goes along Disneyland Drive. Um, minus the backstage areas that are there in between that and the road. So, um, you know, there has to be some sort of opening made to get to these spaces. And in order to do that, they probably, they might have to, you know, modify some existing spaces to fit in these new paths and landscapes that would go to those areas. You think about, uh, Hungry Bear and its space, it changed a lot when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was added. They added a whole new pathway that didn't exist in Disneyland um, and then changed the entire Rivers of America uh, to be a much shorter route than it used to be just to fit Star Wars in. Uh, so that that was a huge, you know, uh, restructuring of the whole surface of Disneyland just to fit in a new land. Um, and it also required getting a bunch of people through a pathway that didn't exist before, uh, which is what we have now that goes into Galaxy's Edge from from Critter Country, so it's the same thing, right? Does does the does Disneyland cross over somewhere in New Orleans Square into this new space, or does it cross over um, in Critter Country? Logically, I would say it will cross over in Critter Country because it's already a dead end, um, but maybe that's not where they want it to be. Maybe they want it to be somewhere near. Uh, you know, New Orleans Square. And in that case, um, you know, you you probably have to restructure a lot of Pirates of the Caribbean's existing infrastructure because the line's always blocking every single pathway. And you can't have um, a, a mass of people trying to go into a new space that's brand new, uh, trying to cross through a line that already has to have cast members holding a rope to let people cross the pathway in waves. Like... That's already a nightmare, right? So <laughs> even if Disneyland Forward, and, and the whole purpose of Disneyland Forward is to increase capacity at Disneyland. And if you're increasing capacity at Disneyland, that means bigger lines. So, you know, something has to be done about Pirates of the Caribbean's queue. So That's what I'm saying. Taking, the, the Haunted yeah, Mansion They're not taking right Pirates of the Caribbean away. They just got to fix it somehow. Yeah. Uh, we got a good question from USC Greg. Would they put Pandora in this new area, or would it go in a pre -ex or into existing park? So, um, are we going to lose Hollywoodland? Are we going to lose Autopia? Uh, or is Disneyland more like we're we're pushing uh, Avatar Experience Land into Disneyland forward? Uh, what are your thoughts, Danny? I don't know. I don't know. Um... The verbiage before we knew that Disneyland was like, we know what we want to put in these spaces and we know where and what kind of thing. Before we heard that, I had thought um, that we would see it in a new space because if they're talking so confidently, that means they already knew where and already started planning. Um, and they wouldn't do that for Disneyland Forward Space yet because it hasn't been approved. Uh, so that's what I thought until Disney had said, Hey, we know where and we know what. Yeah. Um, so now that they have shared that they, that that's the case, it makes me think maybe it is in the Disneyland forward areas of rezoning. Um, so who knows? I have no idea where Pandora would even go at all. Yeah. I, 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 I want to say it's in a new space. So they just got a fresh canvas of whatever they want, a fresh dirt field. So th there's no limitation. Uh, but at the same time, I, I could see uh, some existing areas that, that could just go. Mainly uh, Autopia, uh, Submarines area. And at the same time, Hollywoodland and whatever those buildings are there uh, by Hollywood Lounge. 
Um, what about Tomorrowland? Will it ever get an update? I think they've just moved on from Tomorrowland, Danny. I think they're good. We talked about we talked about this in the last episode, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's just like they're hoping we forget. <laughs> yeah, Tomorrowland is. Uh, uh, well, I, I might as well ask this question: Is there any queue that needs an updated Tomorrowland? <laughs> I would say no. I feel like Tomorrowland queues are fine. You rarely see overflow coming into walkways. Uh, the only one that kind of has an issue is uh, sometimes uh, Astro Orbiter. <laughs> as shocking as that is, it gets a long line. Um, let me see. We need a Cosmic Rewind type of ride. I wish, man. I wish. Uh, what are the chances they make a new theme park for 20th Century Fox properties that they own? A Titan AE ride? Aliens Land? Is there any chance for that? That, that like, no. uh, we get Fox <laughs> so. properties landing on, uh, <laughs> on Disney fo Disneyland Forward? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I think they want to stick to, like, like, the close brands, uh. Um, but at the same time, you could say, like, we, we, we got Avengers, we got Star Wars. Those were technically Disney. Um, we got a gifted membership. Oh, damn. I don't want to miss out. Peter, who did that go to? To Jennifer. Let's go. My fires, Peter. Thank you for supporting the fire, my friend. Thank you for growing the community, Peter. Um, let me see. Let me see. Just get rid of Launch Bay. Man. I feel like that, that's been said a thousand times. Could Avatar go in Galaxy's Edge expansion area or backstage in that area? I, I, I think if, if there was ever to be something done behind uh, Galaxy's Edge or anywhere near Galaxy's Edge, it's Galaxy's Edge expansion. <laughs> I, don't, I feel like they're just... Disney's like... Uh, they're not going to... I find it hard to believe that they don't ex keep expanding Star Wars. Star Wars is too important to them. Uh, I don't doubt that we were supposed to get a Galactic Star Cruiser in California. Uh, it was only part of the storyline. That's like the most important thing to Disney about Galaxy's Edge. Uh, Planet of the Apes Land. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. Um, I, I think... Uh, let me see... Uh, I'm trying to think if there was like some other very big things for Disneyland. Um, uh, there is, but they're not having to do with Disneyland Forward. Yeah, I think for Disneyland Forward for now, that's kind of uh, where we're going to end it. Uh, I do want to go into this one, and uh, this is probably the most exciting news for the current time. Pixar Fest, Pixar Fest coming back. We got news. We got updates. I can't wait to talk about it. This is very exciting. I've been asking for a Pixar Fest uh, ever since it left. <laughs> I don't even know. I, I have to just say it. It is stupid that Pixar Fest wasn't a regular thing the first time it debuted. Pixar Fest was incredible, and Disney just went away from it. I don't know why. Oh, I know why. Galaxy's Edge. They thought Galaxy's Edge was just going to carry summer. The very next summer, it was empty. Ain't nobody come for Galaxy's Edge. But Pixar Fest. People are going to come in the bunches. The most crowded you've probably ever seen Disneyland. Pixar Fest. Uh, ten things to know about Pixar Fest. The first one right here. Better Together, a Pixar Pal celebration. We've already seen the turning red float and the concept art for that. But they just gave us two more. We're going to have a soul float and then a Luca. What are your thoughts, Danny? This is this is exciting. <laughs> All these details coming out. Yeah, I, I um, they don't look very big, but they still look pretty detailed. Um, when we saw the first concept art shared for the Pixar um, Better Together, a Pixar celebration parade at Disney California Adventure, um, we were shared um, the same the same exact float that used to be the opening float, no different than uh, on Pixar Play Parade. Um, it was the the lamp 
with the, the signage on it. And that was the same exact float that we had for years and years and years for the Pixar play parade. It just had a new paint job on it that was different and more colorful. Uh, and so immediately I thought, oh, we're just getting the Pixar play parade back with this new addition of the four town turning red float. And it's, they're essentially calling it like a, just a new name. But now that we've seen two additional floats that did not exist in the Pixar play parade, um, it makes me think that this is like going to be something totally different. So maybe those floats just like didn't exist anymore and they got torn down already. And so they had to come up with a new one. And the only thing they had left was that intro float. Yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, they're not like super grand, like massive floats, but they still look cool nonetheless. Um, I love seeing uh, Pixar Soul um, as a float. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies, favorite soundtracks. Um, and Luke, the Luca float looks really cool. Um, it's got a little bit of a magic effect on it where half his body is like a mer person underwater and then yeah. um, a human above water. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. Uh, do, do you think the, the Luca float, are those going to be people or it's just going to be like a stationary float? <laughs> Cause this one is obviously people right here, but this one, maybe it's a stationary float. Oh, like the, they're just like statues. Yeah. These are just statues. The Luca and then the friends. What's the, what's the Luca's friend called? Alberto. Alberto. Yeah. Silencio. <laughs> um, to keep it going. Pixar Fest uh, is coming back with Together Forever, a Pixar nighttime spectacular. Uh, I love the first one. We got to see Buzz Lightyear uh, take off in the air. And then they also did the Up House. That was, it was just so awesome. So awesome. Um, did, did this have Tinkerbell too? I don't know if it had Tinkerbell. I can't remember. I don't think so. It was just Buzz Lightyear and um, the Up the House. Up um, but the big news to come here, Danny, is uh, you'll also see new scenes featuring characters from Pixar's Onward, Soul, Luca, Turning Red, and Elemental brought to life like never before. Wow. Um, they are really going at it. Uh, the, the Together Forever honestly didn't need an update, but they went out of their way and, and, and they made it better because we're going to get they more. Uh, what are your thoughts on these additions? Well, first, uh, we have Carla and Kiko in the chat. So he hello to them. And um, it's also Carla's birthday. So shout out to Carla. For Carla! Kiko Adventures. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday! Happy birthday! Heck yeah. Happy birthday, Carla. Hope you had a wonderful night. Uh, and uh, I know she was at Disneyland oh. yesterday and today. Hope you had a blast. Yeah, I hope you had a blast. Um, yeah, I, I think it's cool, Mondo, that they're updating that show. I didn't expect it. Didn't it wasn't something I, I thought we'd see, but uh, it'll be cool seeing Elemental in there. Luca turning red onward. When, when have we seen anything onward other than Never. Like, right when the movie came out? We only saw the character meet and greet, Danny, and and and, and that didn't even last that long because uh, just pandemic happened. Um, man, crazy! Uh, you know, dare I say it? I feel like Disneyland uh, is gonna flex their 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 magical muscles this year, dude. They're, they're the magic is, is about to like abrupt. Like it's it's just. The effort, I just feel it. I felt it uh, from like the beginning of the year with Lunar New Year in a food and wine and uh, how they do these after dark events. I just feel like they keep upping the ante and, and uh, it's starting to feel like they've hit stride of that 2019 magic. Because 2018, 2019 was like, Disneyland God mode. Uh, it, it, they were just firing on all cylinders. Everything. Food, character, parades, fireworks, uh, the, the festivals they were doing, the themes uh, throughout the year. It was just so good. It really feels like uh, 
we're we're back on that path, Danny. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Um. All right. Let's keep. Oh, one thing to not miss out because it seems like magic bands might be a little more important. Your magic band plus will also interact with the new time spectacular. So that's awesome. Very awesome for them to do that. Um. This is even even bigger news because we knew fireworks were coming. But Club Pixar? What? What what is this Club Pixar stuff? All right, let me read into it real quick before we talk. Uh, Hollywood Backlot. You can snap a photo in front of Pixar-themed backdrops, play games, maybe even encounter a favorite character to pose with when when the day turns to night. Club Pixar will take over the area for nighttime party. Inspired by the amazing stories of Pixar Animation Studio, your whole group can enjoy interactive DJ dance party, live performances, exciting games, photo opportunity, theme food, specialty craft beverages, and more. All that! All of that in Club Pixar! This is like a little area. Dizzy's going so hard. Um... Give us the breakdown. What are your thoughts here, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> Not only have people been asking for Pixar Fest to come back, but so many people have been asking for nighttime parties to return over at Disney California Adventure Park. And this area is not a stranger to parties of the past, right? This same space um, hosted Glow Fest. It hosted um, Electronica. And it also hosted... Um, the uh, the final one, which was the Mad Tea Party. Um, the Mad Tea Party uh, was one of the uh, the nighttime parties that featured a little bit more live entertainment than it did DJ, even though they did have the White Rabbit DJ. It sounds more like this is going to be closer to that because Electronica was all about the DJ. Um, they did have a performance on that stage there in Hollywood Pictures Backlot, um, but that was like Laser Man and a couple other things that were more focused on like performance and dance. Um, and not necessarily on like a band playing. Um, and it sounds like this is going to be more of like a band playing situation. Yeah. Um, so the question I have for you, Mondo, um, they've set up a live band at the back of Hollywood studios area, um, mm-hmm. by the Hollywood lounge before, which would make sense because that's where the bar is. Right. Yeah. And the food truck. You got, um, you got the food truck so, and the alcohol right there. <laughs> yeah. So the question is, Mondo, um, do you think the stage that's already there is used for the live entertainment or is the stage used for DJ and dancing? I think they're going to go all out. Uh, the stage is DJ and dancing. And characters. And then live entertainment all the way at the corner of Hollywood Lounge. And then uh, what we just saw for Magic Key Corner by the Hyperion, I think that'll be the daytime fun. Uh, and Danny was the one that like said that uh, uh, earlier this week. Um, I think this Magic Key Corner was honestly a test run for uh, Pixar Fest. That's what I think it really was, Danny, because um, what a great way to be like, hey, we'll get some crowds here to – see if this will work in this corner and uh the magic key corner worked to perfection and it's exactly what they're describing here in this club pixar which is photo op character meet and greet and games uh that was pretty much the magic key corner uh this week yeah so right now right off the bat in this concept art we're seeing some things um some photo ops right so we have some uh everything is really focused on neon lighting so the club pixar sign neon lighting um, then right above the Hollywood studios archway, they have neon firework lighting that maybe is going to like pop and change color. Um, and then right behind it, we have two backdrops, one of joy and one of, uh, of Miguel and the dog, uh, from the movie Coco that are neon signs as well. Maybe they'll have a little bit of animation. I don't know, but you can also see two, um, Pixar ball lampposts that I don't know if those are existing lamps that are already there, that they're just going to change them to have like a ball. So this is like a decent amount of money that they're spending on a celebration. (laughs) That's not, that's supposed to be temporary, right? That's ending um, at the end of summer before we go into the Halloween season. So that's a, a good amount of money, but to be fair, Disney spent a really good amount of money the last time they had Pixar Fest. So 
um, maybe this is a good indicator. <laughs> um, uh, I, I thought of this yesterday when I walked past it, Danny. Do you think Club Pixar also opens up Stage 16, which was the Avenger Superstore, and it gets used for Club Pixar? You think they go that hard? <laughs> Where they're yeah, like, they're, we're, we're, we're using everything. Everything we got, we're going to use it all. What do you think? They they could. They've done that before. And um, they did that for one of these nighttime night, nighttime uh, situations that they had going on where they brought people into Stage 17 and they had a DJ set up in there um, and a dance floor and all that stuff. So we could see that again. We could, we could see that again. Uh, it's a perfect little back corner for club Pixar yeah. um, to go in there. They can even set up like a little gift shop inside there uh, <laughs> since they probably haven't really torn down <laughs> the, right. the Avengers store. They could just kind of keep it up and theme it Pixar and then have a little store in there that sells Pixar stuff. But and, that's, uh, that's a good idea, Mondo too. That, that could be. Yeah, dude. Hey, stay 17. Fine. Uh, maybe it'll be like the hub of Pixar merch. It's just, it's all there. You want the Pixar merch? It's in there. Uh, because you best believe people are going to want Club Pixar shirts, hoodies, all that good stuff. Club Pixar is going to be a smash hit. Because, not because it's just on the alcohol side, but just in general, like, you don't have to do rides. You could probably mobile order your food or drinks over here. It's just going to be a good, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time over here. Um, all right, to keep the whole party vibe going, Disneyland's getting involved too. And honestly, this came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah, and this answers the question from Mylissa in the chat. She mentioned earlier, is Pixar Fest a DCA only thing? No, it's not. It's definitely a both parks and downtown Disney thing. Um, so, and this is a perfect example um, of just how much they're going for Pixar Fest at Disneyland. They're going super hard. They're bringing Fantasyland Theater to life as Pixar Pals Playtime. Uh, this is going to be a high, they're going to have a high energy show. What? That sounds awesome. You see a lot of our favorite characters there. Inside Out, Toy Story, Incredibles. Uh, surprisingly, Monster Inc. They got up. <laughs> this is going to be a character-driven show, whatever it's going to be. Uh, interactive games, photo locations, activities inspired by Pixar feature film, and even watch a select uh, of iconic shorts on the big screen. Uh, I don't know what that kind of means, <laughs> uh, but this is going to be probably the number one thing uh, for all families with kids. This is the number one thing right here. You're going to dance, meet characters, photo ops. There's going to be uh, food that I'll go over in a little bit. Uh, this is crazy. This is crazy. Uh, let me go over the food just to bring it up. Uh, is it right here? Do they talk about it right here? Or is it the next one? Okay, I'll get into it in a little bit. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Danny? Why did it Disneyland use this the last four years? What the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> what you know, I can't we didn't get tell of a Lion King, but like, come on, this, this is this is next level right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is very reminiscent to when this space used to be um, the Princess Fantasy Fair area. So before we had Fantasy Fair um, outside the castle on the left hand side, like it is right now, um, it was in this space, and the princesses used to do a show, and the kids would dance and watch along in front of them as well too. And then they also had a, like photo ops and a little store and um, like an alleyway with three different backdrops where you could meet the different princesses. Um, so this space has already played host to something like that in the past. So it's cool that they're, they're doing that. Um, what I can't make out though, Mondo, is that, um, and maybe they have, maybe they haven't, I can't tell, <laughs> um, but it looks to me like the whole floor section of the seating has been taken out. Mm, okay that's true because like the the upper parts there's a railing that's right there that's like the parts that start going up um they're there but like everything in front of it is flat gone and uh and those are like permanent seats at least i thought <laughs> they're in the that's cement. what i was gonna say uh the, so, the, the, those were not like uh oh yeah don't, we don't want to use the front section take it out yeah 
so, so and when happening? I was over there when I was over there this week, um, this weekend, and I walked over in this direction, um, they had already stripped the stage, so they're getting ready to add those Pixar elements to which by the way, that stage is a hundred percent um making the magical map. It's existing the way it looks just like making the magical map. That's the wooden stage from making the magical map. Um, except for they just put Pixar decorations on it. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they've stripped it and they're adding that now. So I saw that already. Um, and there was major construction walls around it, like the real construction walls. So my thought is, is they're probably coming in and ripping out those seating. But again, another example, Mondo, of, of how they're spending a good amount of money, I would say, to alter stuff for something that's temporary or supposed to be anyway. So. Yeah, it, it, I'm getting the vibe that um, if this goes well, maybe this becomes a Halloween version of this. And if it goes well again, w- 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 why doesn't this just become a Christmas version, right? Because they yeah. have enough Halloween characters to fill this up. And uh, we kind of see a dance party already in Tomorrowland, and it's very successful so maybe that's why they're like, well, let's take that success of Tomorrowland Dance Party and throw it over here. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting. Um, Pixar themed foods. This is where uh, it gets incredibly interesting. Uh, new this year, Trevador Tavern will transform to feature Pixar inspired bites and beverages. And once again, Paradise Garden Grill and Disney California Adventure will serve Coco inspired menu items. But this is what I, I was shocked. Uh, like, I can't believe this is happening. You'll also want to mark your calendars because beginning May 10th, six Pixar themed marketplaces will join the fun at DCA and available through the length of the festival. Each location will feature a unique film. Menu items will transport you and your taste buds right into your fan favorite Pixar world. We're going to have a summertime dishes inspired by uh, Porto Rosa pasta from Luca. Reimagined classics uh, at Gusto's to go themed to Ratatouille. We're going to have a playful, I don't even know how to say that word, the elemental table inspired by Element. Fun foods perfect for a tween, boy band, or anyone really at Four Town Fave Four Ites from Turning Red. (laughs) <laughs> Feel good foods that feed your soul. That's the spark inspired by soul. And flavors to appeal all of your emotions at hanger management from inside out. Wow. Wow. They're doing themed booths to this festival. Uh, I don't recall them doing anything like that uh, for, for summer theme. At, at least not that I can remember. Maybe, maybe they've done it. In, I don't think they actually. I'll go right now. They haven't. They haven't done anything like that for a summer theme. Uh, what are your thoughts, Danny? <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, maybe that that explains why we didn't have as many booths for food and wine. Is mm. because they were already starting work on some of the decor for the signage that they're going to put on these booths. <laughs> yeah. Uh, potentially. But um, it does mean, right, that we'll probably see some of the booths stick around after Food and Wine Festival. Um, uh, and it makes sense, right? Because food and wine festival ends on April 22nd. And I think this starts on April 26th. So there's not a lot of time to break a lot of stuff down. Um, so probably in the last couple of weeks of the food and wine festival, we'll see a really big merging of food and wine and Pixar fest together. Um, because there's just not a lot of uh, time there to do that. Um, uh, and it makes sense now that the time is so short, the, some of the booths will stick around and just probably get new signage. So, yeah, um, it'll be like they, they just don't even move them. They just earth eats <laughs> is going to become, uh, the elemental table. I'll call it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, which one are you most excited for out of these booths? Um, out of these booths, probably the Elemental Table by Inside Out, and then mm. also um, the Spark by so- Inspired by Soul, because um, maybe we get some really good soul food there. You know what I mean? Mm. We, don't, okay. we don't get that kind of stuff <laughs> normally. You you don't get none of that kind of stuff at DCA at all. Yeah, like I, I can't even name one spot. Uh, theme park and things with Johnny gifting a membership. 
Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, the gifted membership went to Eddie. Uh, thank you, Johnny. Five fires, man. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Thank you for supporting the fire, my friend. Um, to keep going with all this Pixar news, uh, characters, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to see uh, the the onward characters come. Uh, I think in this article they even say that the elemental characters are going to be coming. Um, and uh, for sure, Inside Out, either anxiety or embarrassment, I don't know, some new Inside Out characters coming uh, for sure. Uh, and hopefully Bing Bong uh, gets unrestricted from the hotel and makes his way to Pixar Pier where he belongs. Um, we got a new bucket. I know that we already talked about that one. Uh, new merch. Obviously, we're already seeing it trickle down. Uh, I'm liking this jersey, Danny. I'm liking it, dude. Hey, I like it too. I think it's great. Uh, uh, I'm liking it, dude. I like the, the whole Pixar Fest movement I'm all about. Um, and I think, uh, for the most part, that's it, uh, for, for Pixar Fest. Um, let me see. I'm just reading. They also mentioned too, that, um, we would see decor at Pixar Place Hotel at the Disneyland Hotel and the Grand Californian Hotel. So, um, I would, I would expect we can probably imagine some sort of grandiose display in the middle of the Grand Californian Hotel, like they've been doing lately. Yeah. Um, we probably will see um, banners being hung all over the Pixar Place Hotel to indicate the the Pixar Fest happening. Um, and maybe they'll even get in on some of the fun with some of the dishes um, at the Great Maple, like exclusive to that location. So uh, before we move on, I, I, I have to mention this. I feel like nobody talked about it and I'm going to keep talking about it because I feel like this is one of the biggest deals. Uh, in the Esplanade between Disneyland and DCA, you won't want to miss the 25-foot-tall sculpture celebrating friendship and highlighting the iconic Pixar ball. And in Disney California Adventure, you'll be able to use your Magic Band Plus to interact with Pixar-themed installations. More Magic Band. They're, they're bringing it to life. I'm excited. But uh, the 25-foot-tall sculpture of the iconic Pixar ball, uh, that's going to be awesome. Dude, Disneyland, they're just going all out. This budget must have been insane for this summer theme. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that one, Daddy? Because that I feel like it went under the radar, that one. <laughs> yeah, I miss... Uh... Honestly, I missed something happening in the Esplanade. The Esplanade used to be a, um, a hub of things happening all the time. They had mm -hmm. stuff going on there. I mean, we had a giant up house there that with inflatable balloons. We've had a, a hot air balloon sitting there for the 50th anniversary. Um, they've had a rose parade float there for a while, <laughs> one year. So they've just had a bunch of cool things there. So it, it's fun to, to bring something back there. And I, I, I definitely am glad that they're doing that for this celebration um and uh it's gonna it's just gonna be a weird time at disneyland it's gonna be so weird with not only all this happening um but we're there's just gonna be so much construction happening everywhere yeah. with all these things on the horizon it's like a crazy time to be here in uh disneyland resort kind of showcasing all this stuff happening so it's gonna be so good it's gonna be so good and to start it all uh Wondrous Journey, Wondrous Journey happening uh, v this Friday, this coming Friday. Uh, I want to go over, I think you tweeted about it, Danny. Um, what, what is going on here? What is going on here, Danny? Fantasmic. We have to talk Fantasmic. Um, yeah, I don't did know. you get any with insight this... with, with what's up with this? <laughs> you, can kind of, you can kind of see some of the responses people were put. Uh, someone was saying it's it's a it's a normal dam that they do to like work on those fountains, so maybe that's the case. Um, and then there, you know, we're we're only a few a few months away from Phantasmic coming back, so they got to make sure the fountains work. They got to start testing those soon, so um, it would make sense, right, that they would start damming out um, those spaces and and, uh, and they can still run the Mark Twain and all those things when those uh, when those spaces are dammed. Uh, they've done it before. So that's um, 
I, I just thought it was weird. I was like, what is this like tarp stuff hanging on the, those, this thing sticking out of the water? I was like, is this like an inflatable or something? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess it's probably just a routine maintenance situation for the fountain. So uh, maybe we start seeing phantasmic fountain testings happening soon. But I was thinking, Mondo, I was like, aren't they already using the fountains during that um, – that frog jazz the, show the frog show they they do the firework projections here already for mickey's mix magic uh so they're ready to go I, I think from a fountain perspective they're ready to go um do you do you think we're, we're getting any hints of new show elements <laughs> with any of this uh or, or the new show elements is is just going to be on the stage you know like different different characters arriving uh the projections um, what I'm trying to say, like, do you see any like added fireworks, uh, added, like, <laughs> I, I don't know, like boats, I guess, or watercrafts. What, what do you, have you heard anything like that for uh phantasmic? Uh, I haven't, I haven't. Um, although we have someone in the chat, um, as Apache 2006 says phantasmic will return with the new dragon with new breathing uh, that breathes steam with an orange glow, but no fire and flames. So maybe that's the way they do it. Kind of like how they do a fake fire effect on Big Thunder, you know, when you're in there and the, the TNT explodes and they project uh, kind of like that orange glow on the steam that they shoot out at you on, on um, Big Thunder. Maybe that's how they're going to do the fire effect for the dragon. So there's you no actual fire. <laughs> at least not there but maybe still on the water as apache uh is this dragon you speak of is it on a stick <laughs> <laughs> or or is this drag like like how is this dragon coming to life uh is it coming out of the ground uh is this a dragon that'll come from the side uh is this like a dragon that's just gonna uh pop up out, out of out of the uh, the ground <laughs> dare i say i don't know where, where is this dragon coming from uh how do you think they do the dragon danny just just a random thought <laughs> um i i don't know that because that if what what as apache is saying um that's not what I thought they were going to do. Um, I thought they were just going to go straight B mode, right? And just do a projected dragon on the water, <laughs> which is what they did when, when the dragon wasn't working, which was a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what I thought, right? And they said they said that we were going to get new magical elements in the show. Um, I just didn't think they would involve the dragon. I thought they'd be other things. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a, uh, a dragon on a stick and uh, like... I guess wings. So like it all be man powered uh, or just people powering it. Um, big rags, six months, six months of membership going to star Wars night for my first time. And while Pixar fest is going, what a time. Uh, yeah, you're going to have incredible time, incredible time. Uh, first time for that. And, uh, Maybe it's your first time too for Pixar Fest. So two two incredible first times going on in one day right there. Uh, if I were you, Big Rags, I would honestly rope drop Disney. Just be there all day, just the, the whole thing. <laughs> Can't get enough of uh, all the fun that's going to be happening out there. Uh, but thank you for six months, Big Ra uh, Big Rags. Uh, it's the new mechanics. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's the same with new animatronics. So you're saying we're going to get an animatronic dragon? I don't believe it. I, I don't believe it. Like, I, I, I would love to be happy for that, but I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Um, I think it will be better than before. Come on, dragon. It's the year of the dragon. Uh, that don't mean nothing to Disney. <laughs> the, the, we're, we're talking animatronic dragon that's so much money like it's just extreme amount of money uh yeah i just don't see it happening uh what's up big avocado happy sunday uh it's a real dragon mondo remember disney is bringing the magic this year 
uh, you know, I asked the question, how do you all know this? <laughs> you know what I mean? You'll see. Well, hey, the, the, if we get an animatronic dragon, that that's like <laughs> that's like the most baller turnaround in history. In history, uh, I think it's going to be man powered. That's what I think. Um, it just makes sense from a money perspective. Uh, let me see. All right. Uh, anything else with Disneyland, Danny? Or are we done? Um, I also tweeted out today uh, when I was there at Disneyland, just going through downtown Disney, uh, some updates happening over there. So I wanted to bring out some things, of course. Uh, the Wonderground Gallery has closed once again. So um, <laughs> It's like, why? Not, uh, again? Again? We talk, and if you want to go to the next photo, Mondo, Wonderground Gallery is closed. Um, but they have like a little mini Wonderground Gallery set up inside of the Disney home store. So this back section used to have a little bit more um, home products as well as like Disney pets, their Disney tales collection. And uh, now it's uh, a little mini Wonderground gallery. So if you're still looking for artwork, never fear, it's still there in that section. Um, I don't know why Wonderground gallery is closed. Um, we talked about a, a rumor that we had been given here from Speculation Sunday. Uh, someone mentioned that the Wonderground Gallery would be closing and that the Disney Dress Shop would relocate to the Wonderground Gallery and that the Disney Dress Shop would be absorbed into Marceline's because it would be expanding its space mm -hmm. into the Disney Dress Shop, which would allow it to have more space to um, expand their, their baking counters, potentially even give a bigger uh, window space for, for the candy makers. Um, because if you look behind the window in their actual kitchen, they don't have all that much space in, in the candy making room. So it'd be better to give them more space and make more bakery counters and, and just have more options and things available. Um, and it definitely needs it, right? Ever since the pandemic, I feel Marceline's confectionery just blew up, yeah. um, you know, for a long time, for a long time, um, it was the only way that you could get um, Disney treats when the parks weren't open. And I feel like, and I don't know if you if you agree with me on this one, Mondo, but I feel like pre-pandemic, people slept on this place. They just didn't know about it. They didn't go there. Um, you, you see Marceline's Confectionery. It doesn't immediately scream to you that it's Disney stuff. Like, yeah. you, you, like, if you're in the know about it, you knew. But like when the pandemic happened and people were just coming to downtown Disney because the parks were closed, um, this was your only way to get Disney treats like this. So um, I think that's, like uh, 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 all of that as a rumor makes sense, but none of that's been said true, right? And this could just be a routine uh, refurbishment for Wonderground Gallery. I don't know why, because it just was down <laughs> like not that long ago. Um, so I don't know how many refurbishments this one tiny mini store needs, but um, maybe they want to rework the space inside so that it works a little bit better with what they got. I have no idea, but um Wonderground Gallery is closed again, um, and uh, and and uh, they got a little miniature set up in Disney Home. So keep that in mind, dude. So random. Just, Wonderground Gallery can't find a home. Yeah. The other the other update in Downtown Disney I wanted to bring up to you guys. Um, can you go Mondo to uh, Tortilla Joe's um, Instagram account? Yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. That, yep, that's a good thing to talk about too. I, I, I got some insight on that one. Uh, Tortilla Joe's. Uh, where are we at? Is it like their latest post? Um, no, no. It's like it's one of the posts that says like like thank you or gracias para todo or something. Oh yeah, got it, got yeah. it. Yeah. This one. Yep says, thank you, Tortilla Joe's fans, for an incredible 20 years. We're giving one last chance to raise a glass and enjoy all of your favorites by extending our last day of service to April 7th. We look forward to celebrating with you one last time. So originally, um, I think they were supposed to close at the end of March, and then the Taqueria was supposed to remain open until the 7th. But now it seems like the whole restaurant is staying open. So um, we didn't really talk about that update at all when it happened. So I wanted to kind of just mention it here. Um, so people who are interested in going to Tortilla Joe's one more time, 
Uh, they can do that all the way up until April 7th. Um, and then after that, we don't know what's happening there, right? Um, I had a chance to look at some of the downtown Disney construction today, Mondo. It doesn't look like they're adding any other buildings on that left side of the new space in downtown Disney across mm -hmm. from Dintai Fung, other than the the park side, whatever the heck that's called again, yeah. market or whatever. Um, and in fact, now they've added, I don't know if you've been there recently, Mondo, but they changed the walls around that construction on that side. And they have all of the concept art now for park side uh, market or whatever it's called. And they have yeah. it all right there on the wall. So they've essentially confirmed that that's the space for it. I mean, everyone had speculated and said, because it lined up with like the building that was already there um but now they've put it outside on the wall so it's confirmed that that's what that's going to um but we still don't know where a permanent location for earl of sandwich is happening right um disney said they're going to get a multi-story earl of sandwich location with a tavern and uh, on the second floor and the restaurant on the first floor so we know that's coming but where is tortilla joe's going to be that new space that's the question, right? We don't know what's happening with Tortilla Joe's. Um, it's it's kind of up in the air, right? It's it's a space that's currently rented out by the same people who are building Paseo and Centrico right now in downtown Disney and also Naples. So it's the same restaurant group. Um, so do they keep this space and use it for another restaurant that they want to build there? Or do they give it up and something like Earl of Sandwich comes in there and builds their multi-story location? That's the question we don't know, but it sounds like to me, Mondo, that that, that one building that's across from Din Tai Fung, that's only big enough for that Parkside, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any more space there for something else. So you think Tortilla Joe's, Earl of Sandwich? Just flip I don't know. It could be, it could be, it, maybe it even could be something like where ESPN Zone is or Rainforest, because, you know, why is that the temporary location, you know, for Earl of Sandwich right mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, Earl's Sandwich is like uh, Wonderground Gallery's best friend. Like they, they, they're in the same scenario. They just keep getting moved so much. It's crazy. This one is uh, pretty, pretty up there. Uh, Paseo. Uh, it's pretty, pretty up there. It's like I feel like getting close to completion. Uh, I got strong word that they've been hiring for like weeks now, uh, and yeah. I don't know about training. Uh, I could imagine it soon. Uh, some people are saying that this could open uh, in April. I was like, yeah, and it, it's, it's happening really fast. Uh, when I was there this weekend, the greenery that you're seeing in that photo up above um, and those hanging lanterns, they're already installed. They're all there. So um, it's, it's getting pretty close. And to your point, Mondo, um, when I spoke to um, I forgot which spokesperson I spoke to or, or whatnot, but they said, oh, I, that's what it was. I emailed um, the PR teams at the Patina Restaurant Group to ask if they had a um, any sort of quote or something that they could give as far as the closure of Tortilla Joe's. And then also um, if they could comment on whether or not they were going to use the space that Tortilla Joe's was there or if they were going to give it up. Um, they wouldn't comment on whether or not they were using the space, but they did comment and say that the cast members who are working at Tortilla Joe's would be offered jobs at Paseo and Centrico or Naples. So to your point, uh, they probably didn't need to do that much hiring because a lot of the cast members from Tortilla Joe's are just hopping over to Paseo and Centrico. Mm. So they're probably just having to start doing training Yeah, and then hire, and then hiring, you know, some more people than, than, uh, than what's needed than that Tortilla Joe's had. So, um, all right, all right. Uh, to end our Disneyland conversation, uh, I don't want to miss out on this one. Uh, we want to hear about Danny's stay at the new DVC hotel. And we're talking about Pixar mm -hmm. Place, uh, or not Pixar Place. Uh, what do they call the new DVC hotel? <laughs> I already forgot. What do they call it, Danny? The new DVC? The Discovery Tower. Discovery Tower. I was like, gosh. I just kept thinking of Tinkerbell Tower, <laughs> but the Discovery Tower. Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Danny? Was it comfortable? Did you like the environment, the amenities, like the feel of it? Uh, like, what did you think? 
Um, I loved it. I loved it. My family loved it. Um, they're used to staying at Walt Disney World. Um, and, and really the only option for Disney Vacation Club here at Disneyland were the villas at the Grand Californian. Um, those are a little dated now, right? And they're almost impossible to, to get a hold of. Um, there's only like 70 or so units at the Grand Californian. And, um, and trying to book them is like harder than getting a reservation, you know, at Blue Bayou. <laughs> So it's like the one of the hardest things to, to book a, a Disney Vacation Club villa at the Grand Californian using your points. Um, and so the addition of the Disneyland Hotel with a whole a whole tower of villas that you can book really made it a lot easier. It's still hard, but it's a lot easier than it was before. Uh, but they uh, I really thought that the rooms were great. Um, they they found a way to really maximize all the space in the the smaller rooms. We were staying in a studio villa, a deluxe studio villa. So not the duo studio, which is extremely small, but um, we were staying in the deluxe studio villa, which has the bed that comes out of the wall, a normal, just queen size bed as well, um, a kitchenette, and then like a bathroom. Um, and that room had a really good use of space. There was storage hidden all over the room. Um, and they just did a really good job of like making a room feel big that's smaller. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was impressed by it. Um, it's it was a nice change from kind of the the standard norm of the deluxe or just the studios that you normally see in all the other DVC resorts. Um, and it was more importantly nice having that bed that comes out of the wall uh, <laughs> as the second bed rather than a normal couch bed, which is what you typically see in the studio um, at all the other DVC resorts. So um, my family really loved it. They gave it like a ten out of ten. And um, they would love going back there. Um, and they, the, the room accommodations were nice. The, the staff were really friendly there. Um, it's it, the only thing that's kind of, that kind of sucks, which only really matters to like people who are DVC members. But um, it used to be that when, you know, when you use your points, right, you, you, you're, you have Disney Vacation Club, you use your points to book a room. Um, and then you have a certain number of points that you get every year and you can use that to book a room, right? Um, that's, you know, typically all that you pay. Um, you're not paying anything. You're just using your points. And, um, the issue that, um, now and, and Hawaii was different, right? Hawaii had this thing called like a transient tax where, um, you pay a tax also while, even though you're using points, so you have to pay a tax. So you're kind of like paying to stay there. Well, California like voted that into law like recently. And so now that's that's at DVC in California too. Mm. So even though, like you're using your points, which you've already paid for way in advance when you bought into DVC, you're also having to pay a transient tax each night that you're staying there. And so it was like over $300 for like the five days that we were there. Mm. And, uh, and you're using your points to pay for it. So it's like really kind of sucky that's the only thing that sucks about it <laughs> but um so that's like that's another, at Aulani. yeah yeah that's at Aulani and at disneyland hotel and the grand Californian now um they don't have that in florida at any of the walt disney world ones but um it's uh it's kind of the kind of a bummer right because you've already paid and not to mention that dvc members are paying annual dues right you have to pay annual dues so you've paid money to buy in you're paying annual dues and now you're also having to pay a tax to stay there. So it's like, are you really getting anything <laughs> with it? You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. it's so, yeah. And USC Greg, the transient tax is super high. It's way higher than Hawaii. It is. It's, it's higher than staying at Alani. So it's really expensive. Um, so it makes choosing to stay at the Disneyland Hotel and the Villas as a DVC member a lot harder because you have to spend more money to do it. Yeah. So. Damn, I'm glad you said that. I, I haven't heard anybody say talk about that. Um, another week goes by, zero D23 ticket info. <laughs> yeah, we had a few people. We had a few people in the chat, Mondo, that said we're supposed to get D23 ticket info on Tuesday. I hope. I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure. Hope, we'll talk about it on Sunday next week then. <laughs> um. I think I think that's it for Disneyland. Uh, I, I don't think I can remember anything else. Um, all right, let's just move on 
and talk some Universal Studios Hollywood. Universal Studios Hollywood, uh, there's a lot going on. The, the big thing I want to talk about, uh, let me go to my Twitter, uh, is that uh, this arrived. Let me point it out. Uh, all right. I don't know if you had a chance, Danny, to see this uh, or hear about this, but I took this picture uh, on March 15th. And when you get a closer look, you're like, what is that? A little closer look. Uh, and I asked around, and a lot of people are saying that this is track. This is possibly track. Um, I'll ask for your opinion first, Danny. Um, there's a lot going on at, at Universal Studios Hollywood, but um, the thought that track has arrived is just wild. Wow. What are your thoughts, Danny? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how how quickly Universal is um, is moving on this. Um, that to me, ever since I found out like where they were going to put this, to me this is like the craziest construction site because that's like so treacherous on that hillside right there. So, shout out to the people that are working on this because I have no idea how they do this. Like yeah. they're going to be constructing this over those Ellis escalators that go up and down the hill. Like it's crazy. I'm, I'm shocked at, uh, at like the, how they're going to fit this into that space. <laughs> so, uh, but it's, it's wild that they're starting already so quickly. Um, and it's weird that like, we're going to see very quickly the skyline change at universal so fast. So, yeah, super fast. And uh, just to show a little bit more, uh, this is on the other side. Uh, this is on the other side of um, the escalator, kind of more towards Simpsons. Uh, they're already paving down right here. Look at that. So uh, I asked around, and a, and a lot of people uh, that know a lot more about roller coaster, roller coaster construction, uh, they were saying that. Uh, you know, like in three months, is they're, they're saying like it's going to be wild how much progress has happened. Um, yeah. Lots of other talk has happened uh, with with Fast and Furious roller coaster that I hear um, that that like where they're at, they should have been a lot more progress or a lot. There should have been a lot more progress, uh, but it's just weather and the way things have gone. Uh, you know, with like the city. And the the working construction uh, or, or the work mm -hmm. the work time that they could they're allowed and allotted to work in. Uh, so, so it seems fast to us though because we're used to how slow Disney is. <laughs> yeah, everything. I feel like everything is fast uh, when when you compare uh, what is it called? Um, Tron. You compare everything to Tron. You compare everything to Epcot. Uh, in a way, you compare everything to uh, Treehouse, Avengers E-Ticket Or, or ride. the way you can I say the Avengers Campus ride that never <laughs> that never seems to happen. Uh, <laughs> oh man, it's just wild. We, we're gonna. It's gonna take a third D twenty three Expo now to tell us <laughs> what exactly is gonna go. In. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see what concept art comes out of D23 for uh, Avenger Campus. We're gonna see a wow, whole new this ride. Be the third time. The third time. The, the third know. time. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's just crazy. Um, with Universal 2, uh, I have to go over this uh, just because I feel like it would be fun. Uh, where is it? H H and uh, Nightmare. Uh, there we go. Venom Slash says they're definitely working fast and furious. <laughs> Man, I can't. Um, gosh, who would have? Yeah, uh, Danielle Rucker in the chat. She says, "I'm I'm going to like watching it zoom by, but I'm not getting on that. Uh, I will also not be getting on that <laughs> because uh, when I saw the concept video that someone created that was still conceptual, right? That Universal's like hasn't really shown anything. 
Um, but they did share a while ago that this was going to be the world's like first drift coaster, yeah. uh, which means like the cars can like spin a little bit. So uh, I'm going to pass really hard on that one because uh, I'm not here to like when I watched the video on it, it was like immediately vomit like right <laughs> away. It's just disgusting. So, that bad? but it'd be cool to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think it'll make Mondo sick, honestly. But he's gonna do it anyway. <laughs> I'm, I can't wait! I can't wait! Uh, all right, we're at Universal Studios Hollywood talk. We're just gonna get into this real quick. Um, did you have a chance to 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 view these things, Danny? Uh, right here. There we go. Uh, this is from H H Nightmares. Uh, a speculation map dropped. And uh, everybody went wild. And, and the weird part about this one is uh, they did symbols. And then they put these, like, movie reels, which I guess it, it means, like, an IP. Like, it's, it's, it's a movie or show. It's not an original. Um, what are your whole thoughts on this speculation map, Daddy? I, I've already gone into detail on my end, but I, I would love to hear you uh, pick your brain on your, on, on your, uh, on your uh, reaction to this. Yeah, it's crazy that they say, say unknown IP, but then there's no movie symbol next to it. So, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did any of it, these, like, like uh, spark interest to you? Because um, I'll, 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 I'll give you what uh, people have been saying. That this the moon... Parisian the Parisian courtyard is like weirding me out. Like, what's a flower? <laughs> I know, I know. Uh... <laughs> like, is it a like is it a maze where like like vines like like poison ivy like they're coming to kill you? Like people are just like taken over by plants. Hey, if it's an original killer plants house, sure, I'm down. Hey, I'm all for that. But then, but then, <laughs> what do we got? What, what's that? What do we plant? got over there, Mondo, with the Cadillac logo? What's that plant day that has like the teeth thing? It was like a Venus flytrap. Oh my gosh! Imagine a room of that. That'd be crazy. Uh, the Cadillac sign. Uh, people are saying that it's Ghostbusters, so that would be Walking Dead Ghostbusters. Oh, okay, all right. People are saying that this moon is uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, the knife. I have no freaking clue on that. Uh, people Slasher. are saying, people are saying uh, up here the the no sound, uh, which I guess would be mummy. So behind the mummy, people are saying that that's possibly a uh, quiet place, and um, the top one right here with with like the fangs, the teeth. Uh, they're saying it could be a Dracula house. So a solo Dracula house. That's kind of where things are at. So Ghostbusters, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Quiet Place, Dracula. I, I don't know. <laughs> What's that like worm thing? Yeah, that I, I, I couldn't tell you, dude. All, all these symbols, I don't know what this stuff means. Uh, we could all be wrong. Uh, this is obviously a speculation map. It's, it's meant for fun more than anything. Uh, but... I was saying if it's Ghostbusters, Danny, I would hope it's the new movies. You know, create something brand new, never before done. Uh, the original Ghost House or uh, Ghostbuster House that we had in 2019 was a lot of fun, but it, it, it would just be cool to keep getting new stuff. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, we get an announcement uh, from Universal themselves directly. It, it would be awesome. Uh, Capti Captivated Mouse says, I think the no sound for Terrifier only because art is mute. I hope it is. Uh, Terrifier is nuts. Uh, it, it's it's literally nuts. Um, that movie is not for the faint of heart. And, and I really mean that. The Knife equals The Shining. You never know. You, you never know. It's a movie property. Uh, it had a reel on it. Uh, all right. You watched Terrifier you... 2 and it was terrible. <laughs> I liked it. I liked Mondo, it. Mondo, wasn't wasn't Terrifier one of the ones that, movies you walked out of? No, no. Uh no. 
Uh, I walked out of uh, John Wick 4. That's like the most recent. No, there was like a, you said it like Terrifier, like either you walked out of or so many people were walking out of it because it was just so violent. Yeah, yeah. That's what the, people were writing articles on that. Like people were walking out of the theater because it was just too much. And, and I, I believe it. I've seen Terrifier. Uh, it's it's crazy. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy. Yeah, none of that. Uh, none of this reminds me of Five Nights at Freddy other than the moon thing, meaning night. You know, Five Nights. I, I don't know. I hope Five Nights at Freddy comes. Uh, it would be a disaster if it doesn't. Um, all right. That's it for Universal. Let's finish it all off with some Knott's Berry Farm. Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, I have to go to my favorite account, our Knott's Adventure. Our Knott's Adventure. Uh, she posted this, Danny, and, and I feel like you would get a kick out of it because it, it's just the randomest thing in the world. Uh, what? Montezuma, the Forbidden Fortress hoodie? <laughs> They're out here, not out here selling hoodies for a ride that we thought was canceled, never came with Fiesta Village. And they told us this thing ain't coming till possibly 2025. And for at, th at this point, I don't even believe 2025, but whatever. Uh, we got merch. <laughs> and it's not just a hoodie. They gave us a shirt and not just a shirt. They gave us a hat. They gave us a mug. They, dude, I feel uh, they were ready for Montezuma to come uh, with Fiesta Village. Who knows what kind of stuff happened behind the scenes where it got canceled and then moved to 2025. Uh, but I like the merch. I like I, I think it's cool. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this one, Daddy? Yeah, that's all the merch that we saw before. I, I remember seeing all of that in that store right there across from the Wave Swinger. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was like, oh, cool. Like, the merch is here. It means the ride's still coming at some point. And then all of a sudden, all the merch disappeared, and no one talked about the ride anymore. And we're getting closer and closer to the ride, the, the land opening. So I was like, oh, I guess it's canceled. And then, you know, I had always, ever since then, watch when i walked by that store in knott's berry farm would check it to see if the merch came back and sure enough it did when uh when uh our Knott's adventure was there just kind of checking the park out during her normal visits uh so it was something i was keeping an eye out for for sure because this was all stuff we'd seen before man i don't remember this stuff danny it, it, that that fiesta village opening it i felt like it all came so fast and it just went uh, and, and it was gone, like how you're saying. Uh, but that that was funny. Uh, there's another thing I wanted to post. Uh, where is it? Um, where is it? Is, is it from Knots? Knots themselves? There was something else I wanted to talk about that with Knots Berry Farm. Um... Man, I can't remember. Maybe it was in my story. Uh, is there anything that you would like to talk about with Knott's Berry Farm, Danny, by any chance? Um, no, I did have a chance to go to Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant, though, this weekend uh, for the first time in a while. Uh, it was excellent. I had a really good time there. Um, they have a whole Boysenberry Festival menu, uh, so keep that in mind. There's a Boysenberry Festival like drink menu and then also food menu with special items that they don't normally have. So keep that in mind if you aren't going into the parks, but you still want to celebrate Boys and Mary Festival, you can do that with the uh, the Notch Chicken Dinner Restaurant. So um, you can go there and then get some other Boys and Mary items from the the market and the and the the uh, bakery and stuff like that. So it's not just all uh, inside the park if you're trying to celebrate. Because I know some people don't have a ticket to go in or they don't have an annual pass. So um, I thought that was a pretty cool option. Uh, we didn't try any of the the boys. Well, actually, I think um, one of my parents got the like a boysenberry cocktail that was on that menu. But for the dinner, we just stuck with like the normal, you know, chicken dinner situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's the boysenberry champagne brunch as well. Yeah. I don't know anybody that's done this one yet. Uh, anybody in the chat done that? I would love to know uh, if... if uh... If that is because $72, damn. 
you know, three people. Uh, a little bit. A little bit of an update too, Mondo. Um, Our not to venture since said the camp store in Camp Snoopy's open again. Oh, it's not that, com- it's, yes, it's not that, complete, but it looks great inside and it gives Cordy's corner vibes. So I'd say, Mondo, if you can head to Knotts this week, I'd love to see an update there. Yes, uh, was it our Knotts adventure? Somebody posted. Somebody just posted uh, the inside that store. Oh my gosh, that's what it was. Is that new? Uh, well, I don't want to say new, but the Camp Snoopy store reopened. Uh, was it our Knotts adventure? Man, I can't remember who it was. At first, I thought it was Knotts themselves, but uh, no, I don't think it is. Um, yeah, Camp Snoopy, their progress is moving very fast. We've now got the the, the Camp Snoopy store reopened with the whole new look. Um, they got the the restaurant in Camp Snoopy now reopened as well. And uh, as far as I know, they got lots of foundation going on everywhere for that new roller coaster. Uh, the tra- the railroad tracks have been removed in Camp Snoopy. Camp Snoopy is about to go through big big overhaul, and I don't even know how they're going to finish for summer, uh, which was that's what they're aiming for this year. Yeah. Our not adventure believe. said that they uh, posted it on Story Mondo, but they've disappeared. That okay? I was like, I knew I saw it. I knew I saw it somewhere. Uh, Camp Snoopy is opening on Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I can't wait to see somehow. it. Somehow, it somehow. I want to see it happen. All right, Danny. Closing thoughts on everything, my friend. Closing thoughts. Yeah, yeah. There's, like I said, there's a lot going on at Disneyland. Um, uh, it just it's crazy. It's crazy how much is happening with the Honda Mansion construction, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Um, we've got all the stuff happening in Downtown Disney, um, and that's just that. You know, we haven't even talked about the turnstiles that the, the situation going on there. Um, the stuff happening in California adventure. So it's, there's a lot going on there, a lot of projects. So um, bring your patience. If you're going in Disneyland with all that construction, <laughs> but uh, I think all the parks have got something fun going on. Knott's has got, you know, now we have Montezuma to look forward to on the horizon. Um, we've got the, the scary farm season up ahead with, you know, wondering what the heck's going on there. So I think we're just now getting into like the better part of the year, Mondo. We're like, all the stuff starts happening and and it just goes like banger to banger all the way until until we get to Christmas. So yeah, it's like we've passed the like quote unquote like slower time of the theme parks where there's like not too much going on. Um, and uh, now we have like everything ha- like boysenberry is happening right now. Food and wine um, next weekend, by the way, you and I are doing a. Uh, a mixology course so we'll be we'll be showcasing that too on five fires youtube i'm excited i'm excited um let me see i'm just reading through the chat Uh, all right all right all right um my closing thoughts uh i feel like the news is heating up big time uh I, I can't wait to talk D23 news because I feel like there's a lot of unknown, literally, uh, with how all that's going to work out, you know, with with Honda Center and uh, Convention Center. Like, it's just a lot. That's a lot going on there. And just how they're, how they're going to, like, ticket things, you know, like, how's all that going to break down? Uh, and just know that I just can't I just want to feel the comfort, Danny, of like knowing the process for D23. That's all I want to know. Like, is it going to be all like random lottery? Are we going to be able to buy our way into parks panel, you know, stuff like that. Um, but uh, Wondrous Journey is returning. I'm so hyped. Uh, I, I really want to go like Friday, Saturday, back to back, back to back, baby. Uh, if I'm able to go Friday, Saturday, we'll live stream Wondrous Journey. And um, that's just it's just going to be a lot of fun to have Wondrous Journey back. Um for Disneyland, uh, it's just watching Tiana's Bayou Adventure coming to life. Just recently, uh, they they started adding the greenery to the top of the Salt Dome, um, and uh, you know, dare I ask the question: Are we going to see water soon? Uh, like in a month or two, we're going to see water logs coming down Tiana's. They have to be done sometime soon uh, because they have to do testing, like a lot, a lot of testing before it ever opens up to to people getting on um for for universal 
Uh, I feel like I need to just start going more. <laughs> I'm really in love with Universal Updates right now uh, because soon enough we're going to have a tent go up and then it's just no whole bar updates from that point on. Uh, but at the same time, seeing Fast and Furious coming to life is one of the coolest things ever. I had a chance to see Super Nintendo World come to life from the dirt up, and now I have a chance to see Fast and Furious. It's, it's just cool opportunities that like you just don't get. Um, and with Knots, uh, I'll be back there soon to do a full update on Camp Snoopy, and uh, and then just keep enjoying Boysenberry Festival because uh, there's there's still a lot of stuff I want to try. Um, bef before we get out of here, is, is there like one lingering item that's like uh, still on your to try list from food and wine? Somebody asked me that uh, like on the live uh, on a live stream recently, Danny, uh, and I couldn't remember because there was just so many items where i was like oh i want that i want that yeah. is, is there anything in your mind that's still kind of lingering that you want to try yeah we uh you and i had originally planned to try to visit uh lamplight lounge because some of the items there that they were offering was pretty good also the the sandwich from oh that's uh, one Sonoma that Terrace. Is, yep Sonoma Terrace. uh we didn't try that one uh, which i'm hoping we can try this weekend um, and then also the the vegan baked potato. Since you were doing like vegan vegetarian stuff, yeah, which, which is a menu item at the Paradise Garden Grill that's not on the tasting card. Yeah, th those are yep. I'm glad I asked Danny. Those are those are the ones, uh, especially the 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 Sonoma Terrace sandwich. Uh, that one went so under the radar. I feel like it, it didn't get a lot of hype. Uh, before we get out of here, thank you. Luz XO, I appreciate your support. Five fires. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, Danny, uh, one more time, where can we find your content coming very soon? Yep. New podcast episode this week um, on the 5571 podcast and a new video coming this week as well on Just Ask Danny YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed or following any of those so that you can uh, be advised when those new videos drop. I do post a lot on Twitter too, Twitter slash X. So if you want to follow me on there, um, it's just ask Danny there as well too. So um, that's kind of where I post my like uh, like daily kind of in the park updates when I'm uh, when I'm at the parks. It's not daily, but uh, when there's something big to post, I'll post there. Or if I'm visiting the parks, I'll kind of highlight most of my day on on that platform. Heck yeah. Uh, thank you to all the mods, all the members, uh, the whole Five Fire community. Thank you for joining us tonight. Awesome speculation Sunday today, Danny. All right, everybody, smash that like button. Thank you for supporting the fire. We are firing it down, firing it down. The Cali Bay and Just As Danny are calling it a day. I'm the main host, Mondo. Ah.